Hey everyone, I am joined by Tom Peterson from NVIDIA. Hey! And you may know Tom from doing a lot of the stage presence. I do a lot of stage presence. Right, a lot of giveaways. Tom actually also worked on FCAT. I did. For the frame time capture stuff that you've seen pretty much everyone use at this point. But today we're talking about how VR works. So the, the question here is, if we start with a timeline of VR, mm -hmm. you know, for a monitor, you have X milliseconds, Y milliseconds, the frame needs to be delivered in that time. Mm -hmm. What does it look like for VR? Well, uh, VR is a little bit more complicated, of course, because there's more going on. There's the game, of course, which is the application that you're running, like, say, raw data or something like that. And the game's job is to take physical input, to do a simulation, and then to generate a new frame. But because it's VR, there's lenses and there's head motion and all that kind of right. stuff. So the uh, runtime providers, folks like Oculus or Valve with Vive, are providing another program that I just call the runtime and the runtime runs in parallel with the game. So the game is rendering a texture that's square effectively, just like a regular mm. PC game, but then that gets read by the runtime. And the runtime does a couple things. It does effectively lens correction, which is making the image right. uh, work with the lenses that are in the headset. And it's also doing um, something that's called late warp or reprojection. And the reason that's happening is to kind of deal with the fact that there's a fixed 11 millisecond window because of 90 hertz that they're trying to hit right. all the time. And the, the lenses are there, of course, because without the lenses, you're got something right in front of your eyes, of course. can't really focus on it. Yeah, if you imagine looking at a VR headset, you've got that, that display about two inches from your head. Right. So the, the lenses are there to allow your eye to relax and still see what's on the, the image, but those lenses cause a distortion when it's on your lens. So they actually do undistortion, kind of uh, modifying the square images to make them a little bit more curved right. to get ready for the lenses. So the big challenge with VR is how do you how do you make all this work? So again, you're looking at an 11 millisecond window. It might help if I just draw a, sure. a picture. Yeah, let's, okay, let's, let's try that. try this in this real time. This was totally right? impromptu. Totally we impromptu. Didn't right? know you were going to do this. All right. So <laughs> this is my uh, my version of time, right? And these blue right. lines represent every time you're going to draw a new image on the VR headset. So you've got 0, 11, 22 milliseconds, 33 right. milliseconds. Yeah, so the, basically, since it's 90 hertz, there's an 11 millisecond step, and it happens over and over and right. over. So think of it as you've got this window, just a small time right before that next cycle that you have to be done with your image. So since there's two people involved, you really kind of never know what's going to happen. So sure. the way it works is the game might start rendering. So let's call that game. And it's looking at things like, you know, taking a headset position and it's calculating animation and it might be doing some network stuff, but it's figuring out what's the image that uh, I'm about to put up on the screen. Right. And the next thing that happens is the runtime, which is actually going to read that texture and the runtime is going to do things like warping for the lens or lens warp. And it's also going to do a uh, reprojection, which is uh, sort of retiming it. Right. Um, and it has to get all done in time to make that next refresh. So on the headset, this would be, you know, image number one. So that's our frame? Yep, that's what you see, and this would be game frame number one, right? So that's the way VR is supposed to work. The problem is, let's say your GPU is running slower or you have, like, CPU get l busy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes this game runs too long or sometimes that runtime run runs too long. So what it may have actually looked like is the game ran too long, so let's call that game two, but now you've already missed the right. next interval. So the runtime's still down here doing its stuff, but it has to make a decision. What does it want to show in the next frame? So are the, are the headsets aware of when the runtime usually occurs and how long it takes? Yeah, the, the uh, headset manufacturers have a whole software architecture that is effectively defined in the runtime. Right. So think of it, this runtime as Oculus or Vives or any other headsets guy, it's their secret sauce of how do they give a great experience. But no matter what their algorithm is, they've got a fundamental problem, which is the game did not get a frame rendered in time, but they still have to put something on the screen because your headset's you know, running at 11 sure. milliseconds. So there's a couple different strategies, right? One is I just take the old rendered frame and I re you know, I reshow it. You can do reprojection where you basically take this uh, a frame that was rendered by the game earlier and you modify it to put it on the screen again. Um, you can also just do nothing and take uh, the unmodified frame from last time 
and re-show it. So all of these different defects have different performance impacts and it's really kind of complex as to how do you, how do you represent the performance of VR. Right, so with, with traditional monitors, non-VR yeah. non stuff, uh, whether you have V-Sync or G-Sync or none of those, mm -hmm. uh, we have issues like stuttering, tearing. What is the VR equivalent of those? Oh, okay. So since um, it's well known that if you have tearing in VR, it's absolutely really, really horrible experience, Nauseating. right? Yeah, yeah. So, so the first thing is that VR is almost always V-Sync on, okay? And that's, that's hardwired. Right. Um, and so what that means is, the real decision is what do you do at every refresh interval? And you kind of, when things are working right, you just show the new frame and everybody's happy. If you don't show a new frame, you can either reproject an old frame, which is kind of synthesizing a new frame, right? It's, it's the runtime creating something to show that they didn't get from the sure. game. Um, or you do nothing, right? So. When you do nothing, which is like in this case, I call that a warp miss. Okay. So a warp miss means that you replayed an old frame, just like uh, on desktop when you stutter. It's exactly the same thing. So is it, does everything stay where it was or is there still head tracking? Everything stays where it was because when you have a warp miss, the runtime didn't get a new frame done in time, so the driver just replays right. an old frame. The other thing that could happen is what I call a drop frame, and I, th I think these terms are still settling. You know, everybody's got a different name for all these things. So when there's a drop frame, what that means to me is the runtime was able to take uh, some version of a prior frame mm. and then modify it and get that thing out in time using the latest head position. Okay, so as long as you use a current head position and you adjust or reproject a prior frame, you get a reasonably good experience, right? But the right. animation in this frame that's reprojected is actually coming from you know, an older frame, so right. it looks like a dropped frame from an animation perspective. But in terms of fluidity with head tracking, you're not getting sick from it. Right, you're not <laughs> getting sick. So I, I, my experience has been when you're reprojecting frames, it's a better experience than if you're doing nothing and you're dropping sure. frames or warping, missing. Um, but you can definitely see the difference between a dropped frame, which is these reprojected frames, and native frames. Native frames sure. that are running at 11 milliseconds and everybody's happy. So I think it's important as we start figuring out how should we represent you know, all of this stuff that we're gonna, we're gonna comprehend, you know, how long did the game take to render? And that's like the new concept, uh, that's sort of like frame time. And there's some questions about how that should be measured, but we'll get all that worked sure, out. Sure. And then, so you got frame time, which is kind of like it is on desktop, but then there's this concept of a warp miss, which is the runtime did not have the time to put a new frame out. And then there's a concept of a drop frame, that is animation is from a prior frame. Right. Uh, now, when looking at the, the games that are coming out, I know it's possible for dynamic quality changing. The, Valve has certainly talked about oh, yeah. it. From what I understand, not a lot of games currently do it. Mm -hmm. We know the, the tech demo does it, the portal tech demo. Yep. So in theory, can the games or does the API or what sees this happening and says, I'm going to miss that frame, I need mm -hmm. to lower the quality. What's, what's going yeah. on there? Um, I would expect most of that to be done by the runtime. So it could be in the game, but it, 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 and it's not within NVIDIA's control, but I would expect right. the runtime to do something like say, hey, the frame I just got was a little bit late. Right. And because of that, I suggest that you lower the quality settings of your render of the game, and the, the API would be something between the runtime and the game where they're cooperating on the technology to reduce quality. Sure. The runtime kind of needs to know about it, um, but um, you know, I think it's a little unclear. Right, so uh, recapping the major points here, uh, the runtime sits sort of at the end of the pipe for mm -hmm. delivering the frame. Yep. Uh, we were talking previously about sort of how long that normally takes. Yeah. Now with the Vive and the Rift, do they take a different? It's very similar. Okay. I mean, uh, if the, the runtime is designed to be very quick. Mm -hmm. And so you want to do, you're not doing a full rendered of a frame. You're, right. you're basically doing a quick shader on an existing rendered image and then um, showing it. So it's not, it's not meant to take as long as the games take. Right. So it's a couple milliseconds typically. And then outside of that, the items to look out for in the future, uh, we've got warp misses mm -hmm. and then drop frames. Yep. And then the difference is basically a totally still uh, output from a previous render, I guess, mm -hmm. render pass. Mm -hmm. 
versus one with no animation. Yeah, the way I think about it is when you have a warp miss, mm. you're you're going to get a stuttery experience, and right. it, it can be pretty bad. And when you have a drop frame, you're going to be um, missing animation steps. So you'll see some judder in animation, but it's better than uh, a warp miss. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, very cool. That's a good overview, I think, for the basics of how VR works. Yeah. And I'm sure we'll have more stuff to talk about at some point in the future. I hope so. I haven't gotten into a whole lot of VR yet. I'm sure our, our readers know we've looked at it a million times at all mm -hmm. the, the tours. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll see, we'll see where expansion op options are. So, Tom, thank you for the walkthrough, the glorious <laughs> The chart glorious chart, with yeah. The, with the engineer's yeah, handwriting. Say, yes, and we'll yes. get a little smiley face. Yeah. Hearts to RDU, right? <laughs> right. right. My alma mater. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for joining. Yeah, good to see you. I'll see you next time. Yeah.